Hi, and thanks for joining me. And yes, I'm back. I hope you had a great Christmas and also a safe new year. Now, Taze Rochelle might not be a household name here in Australia, but it's a different story in Brazil. As a young girl, Taze never dreamed about one day going to the Olympics as a fencer, but it's a sport that she's come to love. For me, fencing is like a chess with muscle because it's a sport that is not only important to your your shape, if you are strong or fast, you have to do a strategy. So after I start to understand the game, that how excited is uh, was fencing, though I definitely I'm I'm in love. So for me, it's the best sport ever. That's Brazilian Olympic fencer Taze Rochelle, and you're going to hear more about her sporting career and why she's also currently living in Australia soon. A US supergroup which consisted of Soundgarden singer the late Chris Cornell as well as Tom Morello, Tim Comerford and Brad Wilk from Rage Against the Machine. That was Audio Slave and Original Fire. The Bucket List. never watched fencing, but um, I have watched it a couple of times on TV, but I really couldn't tell you much about the sport. But recently, I got the chance to chat to someone who knows quite a bit about it. Now, Taze Rochelle represented Brazil at the Rio Olympics in 2016 in fencing, but never dreamed of being a fencer really in the first place. Taze currently lives in Melbourne, and I asked her how her brother influenced her decision to start fencing in the first place. No, it was interesting because I was too young. I started when I was six years old in Sao Paulo, the city that I was born in Brazil. And my brother loved, uh, loved uh, Remen, you know, the cartoon? He yes, met, he yes. Met. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and my father said, oh, do you like He-Man? Probably you love fencing because fencing has swords. So my brother, my older brother, André Rochelle, he started. And I had to wait for him. And all the time I was, oh, he always have to come here to fa- uh, in this weird sport. And the coach, his coach <laughs> said, Thais, stop to complain. And if you start to practice, we start to fencing, I will give you... Um, I would say Valley Lunch, it means a uh, sandwich after training. And I say, okay, I will start. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm 28 years before a uh, sandwich. <laughs> before sandwich and he men. It was funny, but but I but definitely as it's a beautiful sport. I'm really happy that my older brother start with this passion for swords, you know. You know, it's one thing to keep coming back because someone's offered you a free sandwich, but there must be something that you now love about the sport of fencing. What is it that you love? For me, fencing is like a chess with muscle uh, because it's a sport that is not only important to your, your shape, if you are strong or fast, you have to do a strategy. So after I start to understand the game, that how it's excited is... Uh, was fencing, though I definitely I'm I'm in love. So for me, it's the best sport ever. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> no. But I, and uh, not only if, uh, the sports, but uh, the group, the fencers are amazing. In my club in Brazil, uh, my best friends are fencers. Here, my group is uh, fencer uh, are fencers because uh, it's a nice group. It's a nice environment, you know. So I think that the good thing, but not, not only fencing, but it's, it's sports in general, I think is the, the atmosphere. It's beautiful. Now, Taze, I have a confession. I don't know a lot about fencing. I've watched it. I've watched it when the Olympics have been on, but I know that there are three different disciplines in fencing. What are the three different disciplines and what's the category that you mainly compete in? Well, we have three kinds of uh, swords. There, it's foil, sable, and AP. I'm foil, and the difference is the place, the spots that you can hit your your opponent. Uh, there are many small um, difference, but AP you can hit all body, mask, chest, uh, pants, whatever. Foil you can only electric jacket that you can hit your opponent. And sable is another electric jacket, but this electric jacket will have some 
dielectric sleeves and mask as well. It's, uh, it's different. The spot that you can hit your opponent is the most important difference, I think so. Yeah, I think so. No, I'm sure. <laughs> So it's not just fencing also that you have an interest in because I note that you're a graduate in fashion design as well. Has there been any chance yet for your fashion design to cross over into your fencing? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Actually, in the, it was incredible because uh, when I decided to be professional, when they decided Rio as the city of Olympics, because I had my label in Brazil and I started to think, oh, fencing, I cannot earn money and maybe I will give up. Not to give up, but we will continue uh, fencing as a hobby, you know. But when Rio was chosen, Petrobras is a oil company in Brazil. It's really, uh, it's really famous. They start to sponsor us. So for me, it was a good opportunity to do what I love, to live in Italy because I live in Italy for four years to practice in the best club in the world. For me, in my opinion, it's one of the best. Daniele Garotto was the champion in the Olympics. Now he won. The, uh, he was the second in the world championship. So whatever. The, there are many guys with a good result in Italy, in my club, so I decided to move to this club to prepare for Olympics. But whatever, I was, we are talking about fashion. And I decided to give up, but all the time I'm talking with my boyfriend that I want to keep practicing and keep coaching because now I'm coaching a club, Black Lords Club in Melbourne. But uh, in the same time, I think that I will start to think about to produce some, some things uh, because... I think that I can do fitwear, you know, and mm. in Brazil I start to grow up with fitwear and fitwear and fencing. I think that I can do both. Here we have a lot of opportunities, so why not? I'm Rihanna Patrick. This is ABC Radio and Taze Rochelle is my guest. She's a 2016 Rio Olympian. She's a fencer, four-time uh, South American champion, 10 times Brazilian champion and currently residing in Melbourne here in Australia. Now, Taze, on your fencing, you've had some time out due to injury and your shoulder. So 2017 was a, a bit of a, a restart for you. But what are the kinds of things that you have to um, think about when you are an Olympic fencer and at that high elite level of the way that you have to look after your body? Well, actually, uh, I think that when you have a high level where when are you professional in a sport, it's hard to think about. Uh, most of us, we have endurance, but what uh, we used to do is uh, have a good personnel that try to protect our body against injuries. Mm -hmm. So I think that... Uh, I had a really good team for Olympics, but unfortunately, you cannot imagine 28 years hitting our opponent and in the end, my shoulder was really bad. But I think when it's high level, it's hard to don't have any kind of endurance. But in the end, it's a good life because it was only in one shoulder, you know. After 28 years, I had one Olympics, three Pan American Games and a beautiful career. So for me, it was nothing. Olympics always is uh, the dream of all athletes. So, but if you want to go, you have to dedicate all your life for a sport. So I decided to move to Italy, as I said, to Rome. And I used to practice six hours per day. I had a good training, physical training. And after that, I used to have private lesson with an uh, Italian coach, Marco Ramacci. He's really good as well. And after that, a uh, lot of bouts with uh, Italian girls, most of them were in the Italian team. So I think that I did the best preparation. Unfortunately, in, in Oli at Olympics, I, I won the first bout 15-0. was really good. I think that was the first time that someone beat another opponent for 15-0. So it was a surprise because I was <laughs> a little <laughs> bit nervous in my first bout. But the second bout, I, I lost against uh, Shanaeva. She's a Russian, really good. She was in the uh, fourth in the world ranking. But I think that I had a good bout. Unfortunately, I, I lost against a good fencer. But in the end, I was happy because it was a, a good participation. And in... My this my history opened good opportunity in Melbourne as well because I met the owner of my club Robert 
de Pasquale in, in, in Italy. So all my career opened good doors. I don't know if you have this expression, open doors, but in Brazil we have this expression. <laughs> but was a, they gave me a good opportunity for fencing. So I'm really happy to be here in Melbourne, one of the best cities in the world to live. So um, fencing for me was always was important and gave me beautiful life in the end, you know. So really, Taze, you were right place at the right time. Yes, Everything exactly. sort of I'm led right to where you are the right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now we have a lot of cries. Sometimes I miss my family because it's hard to live in another country. My boyfriend has to, he needs to have a patience, a lot of patience with me because sometimes I cry. I say, oh, I want to come back to Brazil. When I say to my father, I, I want to come back, my father said, Thais, stay there because Brazil, our situation is really bad. <laughs> so you are really lucky. So if you miss us, you come for holidays, but stay there because uh, Melbourne is beautiful. So don't give up. It's hard to, because it's hard to move to another country, mainly when it's so far as Melbourne, as Australia. But in the end, it's a beautiful city. My life is here now, and I'm happy to be here with you. Taze Rochelle is my guest. She's an Olympian fencer. You may have seen her during the 2016 Rio Olympics. She's also four-time South American champion, and she's currently uh, residing in Australia. Now, late last year, you were asked to coach the Australian fencing team. How is that going? Well, uh, for me, everything was a surprise because after seven months, I had the opportunity to be part of the Australian team as a coach, so it was a beautiful opportunity. And the good thing that the Australian team is getting better. The guys are in Paris now, uh, Matt, Ned, and Shelton. Uh, Matt and Ned, uh, they are in the Australian team and they are from my club, Black Lords. And they are growing really fast and I think that fencing is start to grow a lot in in Melbourne. So for me, it was a beautiful opportunity because all my life as an athlete and I arrive in Melbourne, I start to be a coach. I'm no, seriously, I love, it's my passion now being coach. If <laughs> I have students, they are so cute. It's a, a different feeling, you know, now I'm so proud to have my kids in the good competition. And when they have results, I'm no, it's different feeling. And now I understand my coach in a good way and bad way. Sometimes <laughs> when I was, <laughs> seriously, sometimes when my students are, uh, they don't have a good behavior, I say, oh my gosh, I was the same. <laughs> so now you, you know what it's like to be on the other side of it now, don't you, Tay? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I definitely understand. And But all the time I'm in contact with my talent coach and I say, oh, sorry. And now I understand you. And sometimes when my students start to I say, oh my gosh, I was the same, but it's a beautiful life. And uh, for me, it was a surprise because when I, I, I'm fashion designer and all my life, I said, I will never be a coach. No, 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 no. I'm fashion designer. After f my fencing career, I will restart my business. I will open my label, whatever. But you know, you never, you can never say never. <laughs> now I'm coach <laughs> and I'm totally in love. Seriously, it's the one of the most beautiful professionals. You see a kid, a little person trusts you with all your, uh, their hearts. It's so beautiful. I'm really happy to be here as a coach, but I still fencing. I'm, I'm still, I, this year I start to prepare for the national competition in Australia and regional competition because I decided to keep my career as an athlete for four years and I don't know why not I, I I want to I don't want to think about Tokyo I want to think about this year next year I will see because to prepare the Olympics as I said I have to move it to Italy now I'm here with a good fencers but it's different so I don't want to think about Olympics. I want to think about all oh, this year. I decided to keep fencing for then have good results in Australia. Next year is another year and I will start to plan later. <laughs> so just one year at a time for you. Not necessarily thinking so far ahead about where, you know, what is coming in that next Olympics if you make that team. 
Yes, exactly. Because what um, for me? Because I said no, no, no. I will retire, but I miss it a lot. Fencing. I uh, today after here I have to practice, and I'm so happy to to practice to keep fencing. So it's not a moment to retire. But in the same time, I know that to go to Olympics, I have to work hard. And now. I have to work as a coach and I want to give up, you know, the problem, <laughs> the, my problem. So I have to, to feel how, how be my training. And I will start to do some international competitions this year because last co year I didn't do any international competition. So I will see how is my fencing. I feel really good. Because maybe I don't have the same shape, but I have the, uh, more mature. I'm uh, more mature now after Olympics, so maybe I can have good results. But I will see. I need uh, I need more uh, more time to think about my future, my uh, my fencing career. But one thing that I'm sure I will keep uh, coaching. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that taser, I mean, what is the average career length, I suppose, for a fencer? Is it the same as other sports? Is there a certain time where your body, you get to a certain age and your body doesn't do what it used to be able to do? No, fencing is totally different. For example, there is a, a Italian girl, she's a legend, a woman actually, 42 years, uh, she's 43 now. But she stopped it 2016, Valentina Vezzali. She won four Olympics and she finished with 42 years old. So for fencing, it doesn't matter. But of course, uh, now I'm, I don't have the same energy that I was when I was 25. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm more relaxed. And so for fencing, it's important, this kind of match. But in the same time, of course, I cannot, I, I have to keep practicing hard, but it's not as uh, gymnastics that you retire when you are, I don't know, 18 years old, 19. Fencing you, in, at the Olympics, there was a uh, EP guy, they, he won, he's 40 years old. So it doesn't matter. So actually. it's possible that you could keep fencing as long as your body's holding up, you could keep fencing for as long as you wanted. Yes, definitely you can. But in my case, I because uh, I don't want to stop because I'm getting old. I want to stop because I want to have family. I want to start my career as a coach. You know, it's not for my body. Definitely, it's not for it. And for me, it was really stressful because it was not only Olympics in Rio. I tried to go to Olympics in London and I lost in this the final to go to London. So it was uh, four Olympics that I'm trying to go. It was too much stress traveling a lot. We used to be in three different continents in, in one month. So after Olympics, I said, no, no, I want to stay in a place and travel only for vacation. And I did it last year. Actually, I had two competitions in Brazil that I had a good result as well, but I decided no, not travel as before because it's really, it's, it's tired. <laughs> Can we imagine? It's beautiful travel a lot, but sometimes it's, it's too much. Well, that but must be I'm, hard, Taze, I, I mean, to be somewhere like South America, but you're obviously in a country where the competitions aren't necessarily, you know, that's not where the international competition Competitions are being held and having to travel so much. Do you know of other fences, particularly from South America, who've moved countries to be closer to those competitions? Yeah, heaps of Brazilians went to Europe to practice. For example, Todo, he was top eight in Olympics. He was practicing Frascati. Guilherme Todo, he's Brazilian. A Colombia girl, uh, Saskia, she's practicing in my club now. Uh, Chile, uh, Pepona, my friend from Chile, she's in Italy as well. So most of us go to Europe. If you don't go there, it's hard to improve, you know, because the best are there. And one good thing is now that Brazil, most of us went to Italy. Now the level of the kids, the juniors, are getting better. So it's not uh, they are doing the competitions in Europe, but they don't need to live in Italy anymore because the level is already good. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the good thing that our generation, my generation, we went to Europe and now we are back. In my case, I'm, I came to Australia, but the, the other girls, they went back to Brazil. So the level is improving. It's a good thing for fans in Brazil and I hope to help the same. And, and, but 
in Australia it's happening the same because the most of the time the guys are in Europe as well. So that's the reason that the fencing in Australia, mainly for uh, for your men, they are improving a lot. Shelton did this top 16. It's amazing. Shelton is from Sydney. It's amazing. So I think that the, in the future you will have a good result. And I hope to see fencing more in the TV, in the radio, <laughs> because it's a beautiful sport. It's not only footy, it's not only cricket. I think that fencing, we have a space and it's a beautiful sport. So I hope to see fencing in the future. Uh, Australian team in the TVs and uh, see fencing as a famous sport. Oh, I hope so. Why not? <laughs> and so, Taze, what does the future hold for you at the moment? I mean, what's the next 12 months? What's 2018 shaping up to be for you? Well, now I want to restart the competitions in Australia and do some road cups because the next year there is Pan American Games in America. So it's a, a good go to reach for me so I will keep training in Australia as an athlete but in the same time I want to do the plan of my students so for 2008 I want to have more results for my students and I will restart fencing this is my plan for this year. That's Taze Rochelle, Brazilian fencer and Olympian, talking there about a sport that she's pretty passionate about. And as you heard there, Taze is hoping to get back into fencing competition this year. And I learn a lot. I, um, you know, as I said, I've watched it maybe a couple of times. I don't really understand the sport, but I did uh, learn quite a bit from Taze, who, you know, took me through a little bit of what it's like to be an Olympic level fencer and uh, all the things that go into that. So uh, wishing Taze uh, a lot of luck. Uh, for the next uh, couple of years in her hope to just keep heading towards maybe Tokyo 2020.